Hi, I wanted to discuss briefly a very important topic and that is the topic of craving, whether it be craving for alcohol, craving for food, uh, or other substances. Uh, this is a very important problem that has ravaged humankind for centuries. Uh, and we are getting closer in the field of neuroscience in discovering how to manage these abnormalities and what parts of the brain and what circuits are involved. Uh, what uh, is happening is we are getting closer to treating uh, addiction, addiction disorders, addictive disorders, such as uh, alcohol, uh, opiates, and other drugs without the use of medications, and without the use of toxins, uh, and with uh, direct stimulation of the circuits that are involved in this uh, abnormal reward behavior. Uh, there was an article that was published recently, uh, approximately two, three months ago, uh, regarding how TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is a primary uh, modality of treatment we use at my office for treatment of uh, alcohol addiction. And um, it is very, very promising. And we have seen this play out in our patients. Um, so this article uh, is regarding a team in Sweden that found TMS to be an effective option for treatment of alcohol. Uh, we also see similar effects um, in other disorders, such as <clears throat> uh, weight gain and cocaine addiction. Um, so here's uh, another article where it was discovered that by stimulating the left frontal pole, you can actually reduce the uh, reward abnormal uh, reward stimulus. And I don't want to bore you with the details, but uh, there was a group of investigators uh, led by Dr. Hanlon that discovered that uh, you can change the uh, abnormal activation of the reward circuit by stimulating this region of the brain in the left frontal pole. And the results were absolutely amazing. Uh, on another topic, um, uh, or another target, the uh, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, which is the top left uh, area of the brain was stimulated and it found that you can reduce uh, cocaine abuse. And what's even more interesting is that there was a randomized control study which is a very uh, high degree of uh, scientific uh, integrity with respect to clinical research for eating behaviors. And I wanted to go through this very quickly. Again, I don't want to bore people with uh, technical jargon, but there were actually 60 obese patients that participated in the study, and uh, half of those patients were placed in an arm that received the actual stimulation, and the other half did not, or received sham stimulation, where the actual brain was not stimulated, but the sound was produced to stimulate it uh, so that the patients are blind to the actual um, active or placebo arm of the study. And they found that you can actually uh, cause a significant, a statistically significant reduction in weight and caloric intake. So uh, there was an um, uh, average of approximately uh, 1.35 plus or minus 2.31 kilograms, which equals so almost four to five pounds uh, within f just four sessions. That's uh, basically uh, less than four weeks. Um, of weight loss and what's more is that um, the when they measured the caloric intake there was a significant change so in terms of the weight the average went from 86.9 this is in kilograms 25.5 a, a change of 1.35 plus or minus 2.31 kilograms that again translates to approximately four or five pounds uh, the BMI also reduced in the TMS group Notice that in the sham or placebo arm, there was very little change, if any. And uh, in terms of the uh, waist circumference, there was uh, an actual uh, reduction. And this is only with four sessions, which is absolutely amazing. Here are uh, graphs showing how the uh, hunger uh, stimulus or the hunger uh, intensity uh, reduced significantly in the TMS group versus the sham group the um, sense of fullness or satiety increased far more in the um, TMS group than the sham 
and the desire to eat was far less in the TMS group than the sham. And uh, in terms of consumption of total calories, it was far less uh, in the TMS group than the sham. And they even measured uh, total energy intake, i.e. calories per day, the total fat. Uh, they even measured liver enzymes and total cholesterol. And there was actually a significant uh, uh, reduction in cholesterol. So this was a major uh, finding that uh, uh, we've also seen at our clinic in several patients. Um, I wanted to also share with you, uh, again, there are multiple studies, uh, non-invasive brain stimulation for alcohol use disorders. But the way this works is that uh, these circuits in the brain are stimulated such that uh, when you stimulate the prefrontal cortex, it changes the properties of activity in other uh, nuclei or parts of the circuit. This is what we call the mesolimbic circuit, which is involved in reward behavior. And there are several nuclei involved, including the anterior cingulate, the nucleus accumbens, the amygdala, and the ventral tegmental area. And these all play a vital role in triggering craving, especially at the sight and sounds of a particular substance such as food or alcohol. And you could actually shut this uh, or lower the activation of this craving by stimulating this region in the prefrontal cortex, specifically the uh, medial and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex in this region. So uh, in those of you who are suffering from significant alcohol addiction, alcohol craving, food craving, this can be a huge advance uh, without the use of harmful substances or without long stays in the rehab unit. Uh, this is supported by real data, robust science, and we have seen it play out clinically. I invite you to learn more uh, on our website uh, and uh, uh, send me any questions regarding this. I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you so much for your attention.